everyone. Welcome to the Trial Site News Podcast. I'm Dr. Aaron Stair, your host. And today we have a really exciting guest calling in from Paris, um, Alain Moussi, who is CEO of AB Science. And he's going to spend the next 15 minutes telling us about a new drug they're working on for COVID-19, early treatment, in fact, which I know we talk a lot about early treatment on Trial Site News. So Alain, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Irene, for your invitation. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Yeah. So um, let's start out, if you don't mind telling us a little, a little bit about you, what you do, and also AB Science. Yeah. So I co-created, actually, AB Science uh, 20 years ago, already a long way. And uh, we have, uh, uh, we're listed now since 2010 at uh, U1X uh, in Europe on the stock market. So. And uh, we have developed a compound called mazitinib, which belongs to the class of tyrosine kinase inhibitors. And uh, we, uh, with this compound, uh, uh, targets two cells, which are mast cells and uh, macrophage or microglia, it's also known as microglia. And we develop it uh, uh, with positive phase three in uh, neurology, mainly with positive data in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Alzheimer disease, and uh, multiple sclerosis in its progressive forms. And uh, we continue uh, in an effort to try to register it uh, in a few years. Okay, so the drug um, is targeting kind of like that early treatment space for COVID-19, right? The yes, alors, we have incidentally discovered through the virology laboratory of Chicago University that our compound is also an antiviral. And it's a major discovery which has been published recently in science by the Chicago uh, University, because they, you know, after the failure of the uh, so-called discovery uh, uh, clinical program in Europe, which tried to, 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 to test uh, antiviral from uh, HIV in COVID, and it has turned out to be a failure, including for severe, by the way, uh, then people try to find the uh, new drugs, well, which were not registered, but in late stage, uh, which is exactly the positioning of our compound. And Chicago has screened 1,900 drugs on the protease of the virus and discovered that the best is actually our compound, which we didn't know because we were developing it for other indications. And the reason why is because the protease uh, enzyme has a domain called catalytic domain with three amino acids, which are absolutely key in the replication of the virus. And our compound has the uh, affinity, the, 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 the structure affinity with these three, three amino acids. And when you co-crystallize our drug with the protease, you, you, you find this affinity. And so logically, it blocks the replication of virus by blocking the activity of the protease and turns out to be very effective in vitro, but also in vivo in animals. And they publish all of that in science uh, this summer. And we have been authorizing two phase two now uh, to, to test the compound, one, as an antiviral uh, in <clears throat> early COVID, as you said, or in hospitalized but mild forms of COVID. That's one study, phase two, which is starting right now. And the second phase two is in the moderate and more severe forms of COVID hospitalized for the second feature of our compound, which is the targeting of the part of the immune systems, like mast cells and macrophage, because we know those two cells are involved into the cytokine storm. And so we have two actually activities with this compound, which makes it interesting. Interesting. So early and hospitalized potentially, very interesting. And I did, I read the paper in science uh, that you quoted. And if I read it correctly, it looks like it's effective in mice uh, against uh, different variants, not just the original strain. Is that correct? Alors, it's correct. We have not published uh, because we have additional data that probably uh, will be released uh, soon, but uh, we have tested our compound against uh, the different variants that have emerged so far. And we find that our compound is actually highly effective against all those variants, which is not a major surprise because there, we have experience of other antiprotease drugs in other viral infections. And it's always the same. Uh, antiprotease is, uh, uh, gives an efficacy regardless of the variations, the mutations, the variants, 
Uh, and it is not the case for the vaccine. It's not the case uh, for the antibodies. And it's also not the case for the other strategy possible as an antiviral, which is to target the antipolymerase, which uh, uh, is a, a way pursued by other uh, companies. So targeting protease is not only effective, but also uh, is probably the best strategy to avoid uh, the resistance due to the uh, variants. Yeah, that's very interesting. And I know there's so much interest right now, uh, particularly for the for this early treatment market, because we see the vaccines are having a hard time with some of the variants, and we're seeing a little more breakthrough cases and that kind of thing. So this is a big area right here. Um, yeah. Go ahead. No, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, we have moved to the first race uh, vaccine, which has been a success uh, and now is accessible, unfortunately, uh, mainly for the uh, rich countries, but it's a success and it's a big success in terms of spin to another race, uh, which is uh, important, maybe equally important, which is the race for the antivirals. We need both lines of treatment if we want to control this pandemic because we know that a large part, actually the largest part of the population in the world will not take the vaccine. For instance, in Africa, only 2% of the population has right. taken the vaccines. And the virus is in Africa and will come back in Europe and it will come yes. back in States. Actually, 80% of the population has not access to the vaccine yet, right? So the virus will stay there forever. And we also have people who, despite the vaccine, are infected, even though the forms are less severe. And what's next, and we don't know what will be next really, but probably there will be the emergence of additional variations that will be even more contagious despite the vaccines. And so we can do another uh, shot of vaccine, another one, and another one, and another one. But the complication is to get everybody vaccinated at the same time in a limited period of time. It's practically impossible. And that's why we need another line of treatment, which are the uh, antivirals. And those antivirals need to be tablets. And as you have seen in HIV, normally antivirals or even best when they're combined. So you need antivirals targeting polymerase, and we have leaders there, like Merck recently has made some announcement, Roche probably will do the same soon. We know who are the leaders there, and the antiprotease. And last week, we have had an announcement from Pfizer saying, uh, you know, we are actually on our way in a phase one, two, three with an antiprotease, but also our company, AB Science, as this compound called mazitinib, which is a drug candidate as an antiprotease, and probably ultimately, ultimately uh, the, 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 I would say the, uh, uh, the hospitals, uh, the scientists, they will combine one antipolymerase and one antiprotease, and we will have the maximum efficacy and protections for uh, the people uh, when they get infected uh, or when they have mild, or even if they've been in contact with people infected. And that's when you said tablets, I was thinking, you know, these vaccines that we have now are hard to move around. They require a certain temperature. And like you said, I think less than, I mean, in the low income countries, less than 1% of people are even vaccinated. Um, something like this you can leverage, you think, to. Yes, there, there are uh, different advantages to this uh, strategy. The first one is the user friendliness. Obviously, it's a tablet, you don't need to uh, go to the hospitals. Uh, to, to take it. so, But the other one is also that nobody is refractory to an antiviral. I know nobody who has got herpes who is refractory to take uh, valacitovir, for instance, whereas there is a large part of each population which is, I would say, concerned about the long-term risk of a vaccine because they know then what's injected. If we discover something with time, uh, then you cannot you know, wash out the vaccines, which is not the case with the antiviral because you take it for a limited period of time and then uh, you, you know what you're doing. So I would say for different reasons, uh, uh, we need the two lines of treatments and the antiviral is a necessity and the big pharma and ourselves have understood that. Can you talk about uh, a little bit about the trials that you have going on now? Where are they going on? Who's, yeah. who's enrolling? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's starting. It's uh, just the beginning. And interestingly, we have been approved in the countries first uh, that have suffered the most from the virus. And they are respectively Russia, who has beaten its, uh, its uh, daily number of deaths 
uh, uh, I think yesterday, uh, which is bad news in this country and also South Africa. So because those countries have been severely affected by the pandemic, they are keen, keen to uh, actually approve uh, rapidly some clinical uh, studies and so we are going, and also because there are a large quantity of patients here to be treated, okay, and patients are not really vaccinated and, and so for us it's good to, 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 for the comparator. Uh, and of course other countries will come in Europe and hopefully in the United States uh, with a little delay, but uh, the intention is to open, of course, key countries. And for phase three, because it's only phase two, but for phase three, it's a necessity, obviously. Right. So um, when can we expect to maybe, I know it varies, but here's some results of the trials. Uh, we expect results by mid next year. Uh, we've just been open, so the time to uh, recruit people, it depends, it works with waves, so we are dependent, of course, of the circumstances, and it's also highly competitive, the recruitment, but we expect data by uh, mid uh, next year. Now, if it is positive, then we can probably benefit from uh, an acceleration because the countries themselves will actually probably uh, want to contract uh, you know, some doses of mazitinib in hope that the phase three will be successful and this will help us to scale up industrially. So the intention is to execute phase two and phase three very rapidly next year so that the drug could be available the year after in 2023. Meanwhile, probably the antipolymerase will be registered in use and we will combine antiprotease with antipolymerase and that's the objective for, I would say, 2023. Very interesting. So if people want to learn more about your company uh, or even this trial, uh, where should they go? Well, they can go to our internet site first, which is a reliable source of information. Also, we do press release. Uh, well, if patients want to participate at this time, they have to be in other countries, but soon uh, we hope it will come in your country and, uh, and in Europe. Uh, but uh, we give regular news, of course, so that people... Uh, uh, can follow us and can also invest in, uh, in our companies or participate to work in those studies. Well, thank you so much. That was really interesting. I personally enjoy learning about the new drugs that are being tested. I wish you guys a lot of luck. I hope it works. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining the Trial Site News podcast. To our viewers, thanks for listening. Uh, you're going to hear more and more about these new antivirals coming out. So it'll be interesting to see which ones work where. Um, and all the research that's coming out. So thank you again, Alan, appreciate your time. And how is COVID in France right now? Is it? Well, it, it, it's getting better. Uh, France has had a, a strong, stringent policy of vaccinations where you cannot do nothing, not uh, use the transport, the public transport, or not, or not go to the restaurant or the bar. And you know how important it is here in France. And so because of that, uh, in two months' time, the, uh, our president of the Republic has succeeded to increase the vaccination rate, uh, uh, you know, up to 60 or more uh, persons. Everybody got vaccinated because we want to have access to our best restaurant, of course, <laughs> which is an argument in this country. But, uh, uh, but so the campaign has been successful. But still today, uh, I think that people would uh, appreciate that they have antivirals on the top of the vaccine. Absolutely. Uh, there has to be uh, lots of weapons in the arsenal, for sure. Exactly. And give, give people more options and choices, for sure. This pandemic is, is, uh, is uh, paralyzing, has paralyzed the world, mm. uh, economically, socially. Uh, it's almost not wasted years, but almost in our life. Mm. And don't have that many. So we need to have uh, all the drugs necessary so that we can live free because this virus has prevented from living. Absolutely. Thanks again for joining in. Um, enjoy the rest of your day there and good luck with all of this. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.